That's why it's called a system and global food systems reformation is because we need to address all the facets, systems thinking again of that problem to solve that problem because the biggest way to solve the problems for human suffering and our global grand challenges that we have in this world is through food. If we get that right, that's a basic resource for all human beings. And so that's how we can solve it. And that's how we can get it right. Amazing. This is a, a huge uh, work and a huge of topics that uh, we are super interested to talk about. And actually you start uh, with this uh, topic about agriculture, food that we want to deep in. And yeah, as, as you told us, you have grown up like learning about agriculture systems. Also, as you say, this nowadays is one of the topics that at the core of your work. Definitely. So um, I don't want to dumb anything down. And so when you say complex, a lot of people get scared. Or when you say systems, a lot of people get scared. And there's, there's no reason to, to get scared or to think it's complex or hard. Um, food is a system and we, we have to have this food web and there's a big web of food of how everything connects so in order to to grow food you need sunlight you need water and you need healthy soils and and that's already a web of how food is grown which which could be complexity but there is no food that just pops out of the air and then you can pop it in your mouth and it gives you everything you need that complexity is just how life works and so um To give you just some core fundamentals, in our space, we're in the sustainability and environment and activism and, and uh, space. It's really easy to think just by the way you eat will solve the food problem or solve the environment. That's just a small little facet that helps towards solve that problem. The, the food space is, is really big and it involves agriculture, production, seafood, transportation. Currently it involves the fossil fuel and chemical industry very heavily. And it uh, is, it's one of the biggest drivers for the fossil fuel industry. The majority of fossil fuels and chemicals used in our world are used to transport and produce food. So if the agriculture, food, seafood, and beverage industry did not exist, one of the major contributors to the fossil fuel, to the oil and gas production and users of oil and gas, and also for chemicals that are produced off of that, wouldn't have a client. Because of, of the food industries and, and all that complexity, we're actually driving, we're supporting the continuation of fossil fuels and chemical use. And so that's why we need to change how we produce food. That, that's one important aspect. The second thing is all the food in the world, every food product in our world currently today is being traded as a commodity. Now, some foods that, that are organic foods, some regional foods, some small hold farmers and um, some artisan type of, uh, of food products Are, are not in the commodities market. But for the majority of our world, every food product that you can think of from orange juice to oranges, to strawberries, to wheat, to salad, to uh, corn, whatever it is, it's in the commodities market. And let me tell you what that means. When a food product, agriculture, seafood, beverages, oranges, bananas, When they're in a commodity market, that means that they're traded on an exchange. It's an investment. It's like a gamble. So for me, when, when I think of investors and traders, I think of people who are kind of gambling. Will the market go up or will it go down? Are we going to buy high? Are we going to buy low? And I see those as kind of a, as a gamble. Now I want you to think about this. What are they gambling with when it's food? They're gambling with the basic resource for human beings. The bottom of Maslow's hierarchy of needs, the bottom of our physiological needs as human beings is breathing food and water. And so if traders, brokers, 
are trading food as a commodity, what they're doing is they're gambling with our basic resource. That's one thing. Two, they don't care how, how that product is produced. They only care, can I buy it cheap so I can sell it high and make a profit? They don't care how it's produced, where it's produced, how far it's transported. They just want to make a profit. And when it's somebody trading food just to make a profit, someone pays the price for that. First, the farmers pay the price for that. Two, our environment pays the price for that. Water and chemicals and our soils. And then we pay the price because those products aren't produced well, so they don't have a lot of vitamins, minerals, nutrition, and it's just kind of almost a dead product. And then we get that. And so to surmise the whole thing, if you treat food as a commodity, you're cheapening food. And if you cheapen food, you cheapen life. Cheapening food is cheapening life because the bottom of Maslow's hierarchy of needs, physiological needs for you and I and every human on this earth is breathing food and water. And uh, so that's, that's a big thing that needs to change. We need to make sure that the basic resources for human beings aren't be traded as an investment, as something where somebody can make a profit on it because when they are traded as something that someone can make a profit on, they don't care if it's healthy, if it's good, what goes into that product. They only care about how that's done. And that means that people who care about money, who don't know how to produce food or harvest fish or grow plants and bananas and apples and, and all those things, all the food products that we grow, they don't know how to do that. They just want to do it cheap and fast and make lots of money. And so that's the biggest part. So 